Now let us do a numerical. A steel ball 5 cm dia initially at a uniform temperature of 450 degree Celsius is suddenly placed in an environment at 100 degree Celsius. Full stop. Heat transfer coefficient H between the steel ball and the fluid is 10 watts per meter square Kelvin. Full stop. For steel, take these properties like Cp is equal to 0.46 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Density is 7800 kg per meter cube. Thermal conductivity is 35 watts per meter Kelvin. So what you need to do is calculate the time required for the ball to reach a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. So you can see the ball is actually cooling down from 450 degrees Celsius to 100, to 100 degrees Celsius and we will be calculating time for a temperature which is in between 450 and 100. So we will be calculating time for 150. Okay, so that is clear. So we are calculating time. So when you are asked to calculate time, you are act you are being actually asked to implement the transient heat. But whether you will be uh, implementing the Biot's number uh, means uh, the lumped analysis, or you will go for a graphical method that you will see after checking the Biot's number. This is the given. The radius of steel ball is given. The density is given. The specific heat is given. The conductivity is given and the initial temperature Ti is 450 degrees Celsius, the T ambient is 100 degrees Celsius and the H is 10 watts per meter square Kelvin, okay. So area of a sphere, you know that is 4 pi r square, okay, and volume. Why we are doing this? Because we need to calculate Biot's number and Biot's number has LC, that is HLC by K. This LC is characteristic length which is volume upon area. So we need to calculate volume and we also need to calculate area okay so first calculate Biot's number as I've already told you this is the checking criteria so you need to calculate the Biot's number first so you can see that this HLC by K so it is like uh, H by K and volume upon area so it is Biot's number so Biot's number what you are getting is definitely lesser than 0.1 here see it is definitely lesser than 0.1 and since we have confirmed that the Biot's number is lesser than 0.1, so that means we can now apply lumped system analysis. Okay, this is, I'm, already, uh, I'm again and again telling you, this is the first thing you need to solve until and unless it is stated in the numerical that you need to implement uh, lumped system analysis. Okay, and if it is not written there, then you need to first of all check the Biot's number and if it is lesser than 0.1, go with Lump System Analysis. Okay, now we know the Lump System Analysis formula. This is the Lump System Analysis formula. That is T minus T in TA by TI minus TA is equals to E to the power minus H A tau by rho CPV. Okay, so everything is given here. Okay, so just calculate the time. Everything is given, see rho is given, Cp is given, volume we have already calculated, H is given, A is given, everything is given. So just calculate. So when you have calculated time, so the time is 2,990 seconds, okay? Did you get this? So where, where tau is the time to reach? This is the time constant. This is the time constant. So what you need to do, see the time constant I have already told you, that is rho CPV by HA, okay? So this is the time constant. So since you have calculated this and we know that the unit is in second, so this is also in second. Now what we need to calculate? So put it here, okay? Put it here, 2990, you need to put it here. Now you need to calculate tau. So how will you do this? See, everything is given, 150, 100, 450, 100 because we need to calculate time for reaching 150 degrees Celsius. So T of tau will be 150 degrees Celsius. See T of tau, this. Temperature at any time. So we need to calculate time for some temperature and that some temperature is 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, the ambient temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature of the body was 450 degrees Celsius and again the ambient temperature is 100 degrees Celsius and you have already calculated the thermal time constant with this formula, okay? So you need to calculate the time. 
So, see this is the mathematical thing and this is what is the time to reach 150 degrees Celsius, okay. So, if we uh, do it in, in hours, okay, so you will get 1.6 hours. It will take one and a half hours, approximately more than one and a half hours to reach from for, for that body, for that uh, body having that particular dimension with that particular temperature uh, limits, it will take 1.6 hours to cool from 450 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. So, you can uh, you can see that to uh, reach from 450 to 100 degrees Celsius, it will take more than more than 1.6 hours, okay. Suppose if we go back, this was all about theory. So, uh, let me just, you know, discuss something about uh, the applications, okay. Now, let us see this application, okay, here. The heat treatment of engineering components and quenching of ingots, heating of electric irons, heating of heating and cooling of buildings, and freezing of foods. So let me just take one of the examples from this. And as I've already told you, uh, as uh, I'm a HVAC engineer, so I will be taking this particular topic, heating and cooling of buildings. So I hope the theory uh, means the analytical portion is already clear. Okay, so I will be discussing theory. So heating and cooling of buildings. So heating and cooling of buildings means what? Suppose if I draw, suppose if I draw a building here, okay, so this building and suppose if this is the daytime, okay, so what's happening? What's happening here? First of all, the temperature here is increasing. Temperature here is increasing. So from morning 6 a.m. when there's the minimum, in summers, okay. Now, till 3 p.m., when there's the maximum temperature, the peak temperature, okay. So, from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., the temperature curve is actually increasing, okay. So, if this is the time from this is 6 and this is 3, so the temperature curve is increasing like this, okay. This is the temperature, this is the time in uh, this is the temperature initial. And this is the temperature peak okay now what happens is uh, now this curve won't go steadily to this okay it will actually come down now what happens is now when the temperature uh, now when the Sun goes down when the Sun goes down then what happens then this curve tends to climb down now this is again time now, this is suppose 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. Okay, I'm taking the gap of 12 hours. It's 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. Okay, so it will be like it's, it's actually, sorry, it's actually coming down. So, if we plot this, if we plot this here, so this is time. If you plot this here from 6 a.m., say suppose 6 uh, from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m., 24 hours gap, okay. So it actually climbs like this, okay. This is the peak temperature, okay. This is supposed to be the minimum, okay. So it will be like this, it will be a straight line here, okay. So this is how the temperature varies now. Can you see this is not a constant heat, this is not a steady heat. So, when there is no steady heat, why to use those formula which are for the steady heat? So, definitely we have a formula which is now actually, uh, you know, keeping pace with a new concept that is an unsteady heat transfer. An unsteady heat transfer means it's a transient heat transfer. Okay, now what I need to tell you is, let's, uh, let's do something else. Okay, this uh, this is a very common concept that I've already told you. You might be knowing it already, or you might easily picturize into your mind. Okay, very easily. But what's next? What's next? Suppose you are living on this floor. What will you actually see in peak summers? What will you actually see in peak summers? In peak summers, you will actually find that in morning time, in morning time, the temperatures are lesser. I'm talking about the temperature feeling of the residents. Okay, so in morning time, 
the temperature is lesser of the room and in evening time the temperature is going higher and this is just the opposite in if you look at this curve in morning to the daytime in morning to the peak day the temperature is actually increasing okay and from the daytime to the evening the daytime to the evening the temperature is actually decreasing but what the resident of this particular person what this resident is feeling inside the room which is which has an open terrace okay and it's a very common example you can actually relate it to yourself you can relate it to every common man who is actually you know living in a room which has an open terrace which has an exposed terrace okay so what's happening here so why 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 the temperature profile is just the opposite of what's happening outside the temperature profile is just the opposite just because we something it's not related to this particular topic but i should discuss this because we have taken this example and this example has two examples one i have already discussed here and the other i am discussing here okay so this has this is something which is very much important you should know this is called thermal storage this is called thermal storage okay so this uh, thermal storage and heating and cooling of the buildings this freezing of the foods heating of electric irons you know that the iron actually heats up uh, it, it doesn't heat up you know uh, just like this it takes some time so till now what we have covered we have covered the transient heat conduction okay and we have seen that the transient heat conduction depends on time and all the examples that i have told you okay it all uh, it's all time dependent okay and then the examples okay and suppose if we take the ic engines again ic engines al also takes time to cool okay so we have seen the lumped analysis okay lumped analysis where the internal resistance is neglected and we have done the analysis okay we have also written we have done the energy balance equation we have seen ha by rho cp v this is a thermal time constant okay so we have derived it i have written it like thermal time constant here okay and then we have derived for the biot's number see the biot's number is very important as i have already told you this is a checking criteria okay lc is a v by a okay here and then uh, we can write this particular uh, the above uh, this thing a uh, formula as minus biot's number into fourier's number fourier's number is another dimensionless number this alpha tau by lc square now we have seen a numerical and we have calculated the time for 450 degrees to 100 degrees okay uh, sorry uh, uh, we have calculated the time to reach uh, from 450 to 150 degrees celsius okay and this is the numerical that we have done okay so see and we have checked the biot's number 0.1 then only we can uh, you know confidently tell that what kind of uh, analysis we go to implement okay and then the time constant uh, we have calculated and after time constant we have uh, we have calculated the actual time to reach 150 degrees celsius okay so this is the time that we have calculated 1.6 hours okay so uh, this was all about the theory this was all about the derivation this was all about the numerical and i have given you some extra thing that is very much important for your later life if you go for any uh, if you uh, opt for the career of thermal engineering that is the thermal storage okay so uh, so i think uh, this video was quite useful if you are covering for